Hey everybody, it's Jerry from the Military Collectible Shop. Uh, so this weekend, um, it was a divide and conquer weekend. Um, Mark and I were in two different directions. Uh, he was doing his farmer reenacting with his steam engine. Um, and I had gone uh, up north, up north, uh, to see one of my buddies, uh, pick up some stuff from him, and then uh, do a flea market. Um, actually, just pick a flea market. I didn't even do the flea market. I just got through um, at the crack of dawn. It was a really hot weekend here in sunny Wisconsin this, uh, this weekend. So uh, I have to say that the gray shirts actually worked fairly nice uh, versus the black shirts. So unfortunately, uh, gray is not yet available to the general public. Um, we've, uh, we're just kind of test marketing these to see how well the gray works. Um, but I have to say I was not as hot uh, as I would have been with the black shirts. Uh, so, so far, two thumbs up for the gray shirt. Um, but I got some interesting things that I, I just wanted to share with you, um, you know, kind of from the road trip. Um, let me do this stuff from my buddy. Um, um, World War One overseas hat. Um, yeah, nothing ever fits my head. Uh, but just a nice World War One sewn top overseas hat. Um, now my buddy was actually uh, in during Vietnam. Uh, he doesn't talk much about it. Um, but, uh, but I think I know he was in Vietnam, Thailand, you know, some other places. Um, got some uh, jungle boots from him. Nice pair of unissued, unissued jungle boots. I didn't wear those, he says. Yeah, okay, I can tell. Um, that's nice. Got some uh, OG, OG, olive green 107s, the cotton pants. We all know who likes cotton pants, don't we? All right. Uh, so some pants, got some uh, jungle pants, uh, some of the Ertl, and he, I'm, you know, I'm not a real big, big Vietnami guy to know, like the difference between the, the this pattern and the that pattern, you know, Ertl brown predominantly, type one, blah, 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 I don't know. Um, what I know is that these are, I don't even know that. Uh, these are dated 68. So, these pants are as old as I am. Uh, and in much better shape. So, uh, but nice, and always nice to find. Um, you know, jungle, jungle fatigues. This has got the slant pocket. Uh, army, again, the jungle fatigue. Uh, the interesting thing is he told me which ones he was issued first and which, and he, the ones he was issued first, this one's 69 dated, the ones he was issued first were actually the later ones. So, um, so some jungle fatigues, got a, uh, you know, the butt pack, always nice to find, oh, field gear, I can sell field gear to anybody. Um, this is kind of cool. Uh, it's a uh, it's a boonie hat that he said they had made up while they were over there. Uh, very small, won't fit my frickin' melon. Um, won't fit his head anymore either. But uh, neat, uh, neat sort of theater made, you know, in country made one. Uh, the sort of standard green slant pocket jungle jacket. Uh, you can just see the outline of the 101st on there. He might have been a spy. Because he didn't say anything about being with the 101st. He didn't say a lot about what he's did. Whatever. We all sleep soundly in our beds because rough men are willing to do violence on our behalf. So, shout out to all them. As a grateful civilian, we salute you. Um, another nice jungle jacket. This one's got, unfortunately, some flak damage. I'm sure it's flak. That was the name of the mouse in his garage. Flak. Uh, okay. Uh, some more jungle pants. Yay. Um, a jungle poncho. I suppose you could wear it anywhere. Uh, but a Vietnam dated poncho. These are always nice. Uh, rubberized. Does not smell like vomit, so points for that. That's good. 
Why they dry fast? Um, and a canteen and belt. So some nice stuff from my friend. Uh, and then I went to a flea market um, and I got some interesting things. Uh, the first thing I got um, right when I walked in at the crack of dawn, because honestly, I know you've heard me say this before, but the early bird gets the worm. Get there as soon as you can, because it's amazing how fast stuff gets scooped up. I always hear people complain, oh, I never find anything. Well, yeah, you gotta go there when it's still dark out. You know, it's just the way it is. There, there's so much competition for military stuff. You know, between, I mean, obviously dealers, collectors like myself, other collectors, other dealers, gun show guys, internet sales people, people who don't even know what the stuff is. They just, you know, want to try selling it. So, um, but this was cool. And this was from the guy's father in law. This is actually a, uh, a Halo um, jump helmet. Uh, so one of our buddies um, did a lot of Halo work, and I've got his helmet and his chute, which is ridiculously heavy for being a Halo chute. I don't quite understand how that would even work, being so heavy. Uh, but this one, and it's got the oxygen mask, because obviously when you're jumping at those altitudes, um, not a lot of air up there. Not a lot of birds either. This one... This one's from 82. So neat leather covered uh, with the avionics. You got the bayonet release uh, things for the O2 mask. Actually, it's funny, the O2 mask is in upside down. Uh, but that that's very cool, you know, with the little oxygen-y whatevers. Blah, blah, blah. Um, some other little parts came with that. I'm sure this is a connector, mask, something, something. Blah, blah, blah. Um, set of gloves, also from him. These are uh, from 84. Gloves, cloth, leather, anti-contact. No contact. Okay. Um, all right, then I got, oh, also from him I got a compass. So that's the price tag on it. We'll remove that. Um, Unfortunately, though, early in the morning, people aren't going to deal. You know, so if you're looking for a deal, that ain't the time to do it. But if you're looking for stuff, that's the time to do it. But be prepared to pay up. You know, if you're the first one through the gate, don't be surprised when people don't even drop a dollar on you because, hey, why not? Why do they have to? Um, so a nice compass in a little compass pouch. Uh, also dated 82. Got our little radioactive warning on it. Radioactive. Remember that song from The Firm? That was the only time I got to see Jimmy Page live. I went to go see The Firm at uh, when they came to Milwaukee here. and That was their big song. All right, normally I hate this kind of crap, um, but I got, <laughs> I know. It's an Army Air Force helmet, can't you tell? Um, I bought the other one from the guy because he had the tag from the company that had with it, and it's kind of a unique thing. Um, I bought this more from the guy again, one, just to get it off his table, so people would not have the idea to make birdhouses out of liners. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gift this one to a friend of mine. So, um, yeah. Uh, this was actually made by a company here in Wisconsin in the 60s. Yay. All right. Um, I got... Uh, book on Panzers, early Panzers, just a nice book. We sell a lot of books here in the shop. We don't do a lot of talking about it, but we actually sell a decent amount of books. We've got uh, reference books, we've got a lot of the Ospreys, uh, a lot of the model painting kind of books, always nice. Um, got in a Major Matt Mason figure um, he had the flea market. He's pretty beat, but he was only a buck, and I had him as a kid, um, some kind of moon adventurer. Some of you may remember him. He was very bendy. He seemed to have a friend. I'm not completely sure who the friend was or what the story was with Major Matt Mason, but uh, he's a cool astronaut, so salute. All right, um, worth a buck for the memories. I'm sure you all have uh, you all have memories. You know, some kind of toy that triggers something for you. All right. Um, this is kind of cool. Um, it's a World War II U.S. savings bond, savings stamp booklet. 
you know, so guys would collect the stamps. Actually, my dad, before he passed, he told me how in school, you know, they used to actually save the savings bond stamps and how the, the rich kids got to do the quarter ones and, uh, you know, the poorer kids, you know, would have to save up to get the those. So that was neat. Got a set of World War II uh, Chesterfield cigarettes. Uh, these would come in the sea ration pack. All different makers. Chesterfield, Lucky Strikes. Um, you know, they, they'd make them, so nice to find. Got a set of uh, probably around Vietnam uh, era submarine dolphins uh, pin. These were worn by the enlisted guys, the silver ones for the enlisted Navy submariners. Uh, got in some uh, pins. I thought this one was cool um, from the 80s, 90s, or whenever. Uh, God bless my mother in Saudi Arabia. So from a woman serving. Again, those of you who uh, who know that I collect women's stuff as well. I thought that was kind of neat. A little more modern, but that's okay. Uh, bouncing back to around World War One era. Um, did get some war, uh, war saving stamps, buttons. Um, so that was cool. Oh, got in a heavy uh, Super Bazooka rocket round. Always nice. Who doesn't like a big rocket? Um, one of the better pieces I found was a uh, German, uh, World War II German uh, sword, and this one is actually really cool because it's a it's an icorn sword, uh, but it's known as the Prinz Eugen pattern. This is part of the Field Marshal series of uh, of swords by Icorn. So this is actually a Field Marshal series uh, sword, so that makes it a little bit better sword. So even though it's got a couple little issues, um, still a pretty cool still a pretty cool sword, especially to find in the wild. Um. And then lastly, and this just just kills me, um, but I got I got a little strip of uh, SS Tropical hat insignias um, and uh, skulls, and they, they were they were in a case, and the guy had them priced at six bucks. So I'm like, are those six bucks? And he said, yeah. I said, for all of them? He said, yeah. I said, okay, here's six bucks. Then, because he had him in with a bunch of biker stuff, a bunch of Harley Davidson stuff. And he's like, are those military? And I said, yeah. So, I was happy. He was happy. We're all happy. So, me and Smiling Jack, um, that made my flea market. Oh, I, I did get two other things. Um, so let's let's take a look at those. Aha! Um, so what I ended up with was actually a couple uh, British store displays. Um, I'm not sure completely what store, but I got two of these guys, um, and they're gonna they're gonna flank the front. They're gonna flank the front doors. So <laughs> kind of big and heavy to get through the doors, um, but they'll they'll make a statement. Um, so that was neat. I was very happy to get those, and there was, it was, a, again, a hot day to be horking around a couple uh, British guys, but they, they'll work awesome um, in our store windows, so hopefully they'll be, we'll get those in this week. But I was happy to get that. Um, and yet I can't make them laugh. No, nothing. All right. Uh, so that's just a, a quick and dirty, um, you know, on the road trip. But again, another busy weekend for us. Um, so I hope you enjoyed. Oh, I got one more thing. There's always one more thing. Um, I picked up, because uh, again, I collect movie stuff, and I, I got a movie poster from some uh, war movie, The Double Crossed Fool. So some anti-axis kind of Three Stooges-y sort of thing. Um, but I thought the movie poster was cool. Um, never heard of any, oh, Gene Porter, her I heard of. Um, again, just typical wartime kind of anti-axis film, but uh, I, thought it was, I thought it was neat. All right, 
So, um, as always, thanks for joining me. I'm Jerry. Mark will be here soon. Uh, we got another one uh, coming up for what we got in this week at the shop. So, thanks for joining me on the road. Until next time, keep those cards and letters coming. I'm Jerry. Stay safe. Talk to you soon.